I'm Bob Dubois, an aquatic ecologist who specializes in dragonfly and damselfly research uh, for the Endangered Resources Bureau of the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, how to preserve dragonfly and damselfly specimens. We uh, in the DNR use uh, citizen monitoring volunteers to collect data uh, for various uh, plant and animal species. And we do that for dragonflies and damselflies as well. We have a uh, website and um, collect much of our data uh, from citizen volunteers. In order for citizen volunteers to participate in our survey in a meaningful way, uh, you may have to, at some point, uh, retain some specimens. We uh, follow the um, collecting procedures uh, for animal care that are uh, outlined by the Dragonfly Society of the Americas and also the Worldwide Dragonfly Association. And you can find both of these documents easily online. So at this point, you're coming into your uh, home after a collecting trip where you've collected a dragonfly or a damselfly. I use little uh, Tupperware or Rubbermaid type containers in order to hold envelopes, uh, glassine type envelopes, which can be purchased from BioQuip products in California to place the live dragonflies after they've been collected. Whenever you collect a specimen, it is extremely important that you affix a date location label to it immediately. Um, don't try to remember later where you collected a specimen. Uh, uh, clip the date location label right onto the glassine envelope in the field that contains the specimen. And take your specimen. We use acetone as a preservative for dragonfly and damselfly adults. Uh, the acetone will uh, remove some of the lipids from the specimen which will help retain the colors, prevent it from going rancid, and make it less likely to get uh, destroyed by dermestid beetle pests, which can be anywhere, including inside your house. Ac acetone can be purchased at any drug or department store in uh, gallon-sized containers. It's what uh, you might commonly use for uh, women's fingernail polish remover. It's a relatively safe chemical. However, I recommend that you use it in a well-ventilated area, <clears throat> excuse me, and, it, and uh, limit contact with your skin. I use a pair of uh, uh, long forceps to work with acetone. I pour the acetone into wide mouth containers uh, like this uh, Rubbermaid container. Um, pickle preservation jars like this also work very well as long as the opening has a mouth wide enough to uh, take in the size of your envelopes. <clears throat> soak the specimen for at least eight hours. I generally soak my specimens overnight. After you've preserved your specimen overnight in acetone, use your long-handled forceps to remove the envelope and allow it to air dry. I begin the air drying process by just uh, placing the envelope on a grid and letting it dry out for about 30 minutes before I try to take the specimen out of the envelope. After 30 minutes or so, the specimen and the envelope should be completely dry. At this point, I remove the specimen from the envelope and just place it on a piece of cardboard and allow it to dry now for about two to three hours. You want to make sure it's fully dry so large specimens will should dry longer than smaller ones. However, don't leave it out too long or domestic beetle pests will attack the specimen. At this point, you should transfer your date location information onto a three by five blank index card. And you can do this uh, electronically on your computer and type it, or you can just uh, neatly handwrite the information on the card. The information should include the species, 
the person that determined the species, the location in as much detail as you can give it. Uh, we prefer that you would use uh, latitude, longitude coordinates. Um, you can also use town um, range information from a plat book if you don't have a GPS unit. Or you can use familiar landmarks such as road crossings, boat landings, and so forth. When you've got the information written on your 3x5 card, it's time now to place the specimen into an envelope with the 3x5 card. I use a double bagging technique because that allows me to uh, get the specimens in and out of the envelopes more easily than if I used a single bag. And, um, I can place the specimen exactly where I want it in the envelope. So I'll explain how that works. First I use a polyethylene baggie that I purchased from Chiswick, which is a division of the Staples Company. And I'm sure there are other providers of polyethylene baggies. Polyethylene has the advantage of having a very, very small electrical charge, which means the, end, the specimen will not stick to the inside of the envelope, so you can take it in and out quite easily. So you select a baggie that come in multiple sizes that's uh, appropriate for the size of your specimen and place the specimen into the baggie. Fold the baggie over and crease it near the top edge of the specimen. And that will allow you to hang it over the 3x5 card. Then you take a polypropylene envelope, 3x5 envelope, and insert the specimen in the baggie and the card into the envelope. Fold it over and seal it with a, with a paper clip. I use vinyl covered paper clips because they don't catch on the material. This collection is a uh, working reference collection, so these specimens come in and out of the envelopes all the time. Vinyl covered envelopes won't, uh, won't tear the material, and the baggies allow very, very easy access to the specimen uh, without breaking off heads or legs, and if something does break off, it, it's retained within the baggie. So the final product uh, should look like this. Uh, the specimen in a polyethylene baggie uh, wrapped over a 3x5 card in on which is written all of your pertinent information, placed inside a polypropylene envelope, and sealed with a paper clip. At this point, it's ready for storage into an appropriate storage box. I make my own storage boxes out of 3x5 uh, file card boxes and store the specimens uh, vertically where they take up less room.